Hello, everybody, and welcome or welcome back to The Second Shelf and to another recent Reads on Sunday, my Sunday video in which I discuss the books that I've finished or started or am still reading, except for that one book that <laughs> I'm still reading since, I think, two months or something. We will not talk about that until I finished it. Anyway, so I finished, um, I think, three or four books. Uh, the first two are for the Women's Prize, uh, the long list of the Women's Prize for Fiction, but also for the Booktube Prize, so I can tell you which books and what they are about, but not whether I like them or not. Um, if you uh, have watched maybe my reaction video to the Women's Prize, um, I will leave a link to it down below if you are uh, if you haven't watched it and if you're still interested. But I am planning on reading all 16 long-listed books before the announcement of the shortlist, which will be on April the 27th. So just so that you know. But I will talk about those books once I've finished them. I think in separate videos to have a sort of, you know, them all together as women's prize. But we'll, we'll see about that. Too much information. Anyway, the first book that I finished for the Book Tour Prize and um, the uh, Women's Prize is the final revival of Opal and Opal and Maeve by Donnie Walton, published in 2021, a debut novel by a Black American author um, uh, about um, a, fic a fictitious singing duo, Opal and Neff, uh, a Black woman and a white British man. Um, who had success, but then they split for various reasons. And the book is told um, uh, as a, a book in the book. So you have an editor who writes a book about this duo and about a possible revival and uh, transcribes the interviews, uh, so to speak. So the, the, the structure is, is quite um, yeah, uncommon. Anyway, so this is the first one, and the second book that I finished for the Booktube Prize and the Women's Prize is Miriam Tate's latest novel, Fight Night, also published 2021. Um, that This is the story of um, three women, a grandmother, mother, and uh, a daughter, and it's told from the perspective of the daughter, Swift, who is nine years old when the story is told. Um, and it's about the the life that these three women have with the father who left and we don't know what happened the mother is also pregnant um the the girl who tells us the story has just been expelled from school that happens in the i think in the first page on the first page or maybe the second page so it's not a spoiler um the grandmother is quite old and frail. Uh, her health is frail. And they have all kinds of, quote unquote, adventures, so to speak. So those are the two books that I will talk about later. The book two prize, by the way, I finished all six books in my category. I'm judging fiction. Um, this round and the the octafinal, so that's the first round, and that round will be finalized end of March. So I can talk about these books way before uh, the Women's Prize shortlist has been announced, so there is no issue, just in case you were wondering which you are not. Um, and the third book, yeah, I think that's the last book I finished, is uh, Translated Fiction Tentacle by Rita Indiana, uh, translated from the Spanish by Achi Obejas. Um, and the Spanish version has been uh, published in 2015 and the English version in uh, 2018. Yes, and I just checked that. <laughs> you always see the light change when I open uh, the Word uh, document. Um, I'm reading this for Invisible Cities. Um, you're probably are familiar with that project where the organizers pick two countries each month uh, and for March it was Dominican Republic uh, and Norway. So I read this for the Dominican Republic and I've never read anything by this author so that was exciting and it was a weird ride. So the tentacle on the cover, the, the title and also the cover is uh, a sea creature um, um, I forgot the English term. It's a sea, sea anemone, this kind of creature. Uh, never mind. It's not important. Um, 
and we are in the future after disaster has struck and we are following um, uh, a young trans man, Alcide, um, and it turns out that he is, uh, yeah, I'm, I'm hesitating with he because in the beginning of the book, uh, Alcide is referred to as she. So, at least in the in the translation, uh, Asilde, 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 I will just call him our main protagonist, um, working for a rich woman who is also a sort of oracle for the president of the Dominican Republic. And then it turns out that uh, he is able to travel to the past, but not in terms in, in like time travel as we know it from A.G. Wells or something, but more um, in in his mind. And the idea is that he can change something back in the past so that the natural disaster uh, wouldn't occur. And the natural disaster has everything to do with the sea creatures because there is a, a waste dump in the sea and that kills almost all of the sea creatures. Um, it, it was an interesting book but it was a bit too weird for me. I just didn't get everything. It, it the very dense uh, uh, um, story. We switch uh, timelines, characters, because even though um, the young trans man is our main protagonist, you have other uh, point of views, other protagonists um, in the past and in the present time. The the 21st century, the second half of the 21st century. And I just couldn't, I don't know, I, I just couldn't really get into the story. I don't know. I think this is one of those books that I might want to reread or will have to reread. That, that's a better way of putting it because it. I think I had a different book in mind maybe you know, with the whole time, I got a bit hung up on the whole time travel thing because that is what is said on the blurb that the, the protagonist is able to travel back to the past. But that's not what the book is about. Um, so I, I think I was just not able to let that idea go. And even it's, yeah, it, it's just a very, it's a very slim book. So it might be a good book for me to reread in August, you know, when I have this project 30 books in 30 days and I'm always looking for relatively short books to read in that month because otherwise I will never uh, make the 30. So I, I think I'm going to put this one on the reread list uh, for August. So those are the three books that I finished. Um, there's one book that I'm, have almost finished, um, uh, but I'm not gonna talk about what I think of the ending. Uh, I mean, I'm, I haven't finished it yet, but I will finish it today. <laughs> yeah, like <laughs> I'm, I feel like this, you know, this circle when you load a video. That that's how I feel that I'm babbling today. But anyway, um, and that is for March Mystery Madness, a buddy read with Heidi from my reading life, and we are reading the third book in the Inspector Lindley series, uh, Well Schooled in Murder, published in 1989, uh, and this is set, of course, with Inspector Lindley and his. Um, uh, uh, yeah, I don't want to say assistant, his second, um, the, his team, um, uh, 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 Barbara Havers, and they have to investigate a murder in um, a posh school, a boarding school. A young boy, 13-year-old Matty, has been killed. Uh, his body is left uh, naked uh, in, a, in a cemetery, and it all seems yeah, quite strange. So uh, Havers and Inspector Lindley, Thomas Lindley, investigate this murder. Uh, like I said, it's our th third book in the series, and we both, um, now let's, let me speak for myself. I, I really enjoy this series. It's a bit uh, this book was published, you know, over 30 years ago. So some of the uh, ways of telling stories or, or the themes are a bit outdated. And Elizabeth George is not a very, an extremely fast paced um, uh, uh, 
her books are not extremely fast paced. They're, they're a bit on a on the slow burner side of it. So if you don't like that, then you probably it's not the books for you. But what I like, if it's a slow burning book, that a lot of uh, attention is uh, put on the characters. The two main characters, Thomas Lindley, of course, who is an aristocrat working for the police but he has this aristocratic background, which always comes into play. And his um, uh, uh, the, the the woman he works with, Barbara Havers, is from a very very down to earth working class background, and you know that that gives tension. But also, it's it, the funny. But there's also a lot of attention paid to the the side characters, uh, so the friends um, of Lindley. Uh, St. James and his wife, Deborah. St. James is a a pathologist who is often involved in the cases. Then you have Barbara's parents, um, uh, the mother with dementia, the father is uh, suffering from other diseases. So there is quite a lot of attention uh, paid to that. And I I always enjoy that. So even if it's slow burn, if there's interesting characters and character developments, I'm, I'm all in for that. We will finish the book today and we will have our final check-in um, today. Uh, the other book I'm still reading that I started, I think, a week ago is a non-fiction book, um, The Story of Jane, the Legendary Underground Feminist Abortion Service by, oops, Laura Kaplan. And this book was first published in 1996. And I think I told you already when I hauled this book in, in my book haul that I read a novel last year, We Jane, by Amy Wall, a Canadian writer. And that book is not based upon, but inspired by this underground uh, abortion, underground feminist abortion service. So um, the the service was a, a group of women and for privacy reasons and to protect themselves, they all called themselves Jane. That's why the story of Jane. And in the late 1960s, until uh, Roe v. Wade in 1973, as abortion was illegal in the U.S., they provided help for women who wanted to have an abortion. So they had doctors who would would be willing to secret in secret, of course, uh, uh, perform abortions, and so the women could contact this group, um, and they would get help in order to find a doctor. And when the, I read the novel. I knew about this. Oh, it's in, in, in Chicago, by the way. I knew about this uh, organization um, in Chicago, and I looked for a book uh, to read about the history, and I found this one, and I'm maybe 20 or 30 pages in, and it's really interesting how it started, the woman who started it, and how uh, she got started. So, yes, I'm, I'm absolutely enjoying this one. Um, and then I picked up an Another non-fiction book for the book Naturalist Book Club, and that is Spineless, the, Sen- the Science of Jellyfish and the Art of Growing a Backbone by Julie Burwald, uh, published in 2017. The book Naturalist Book Club, of course, you know, is the book club run by Heidi from My Reading Life and Doris from All the Books, where they um, encourage us to read uh, nature writing, mostly non-fiction, but They throw fiction in now and again. And this is one of the two books they picked for March. Um, In the announcement videos, uh, you can find, I will leave a link to Heidi's announcement video, I think, uh, because you can find the whole list for the whole year. And I want to read more nature writing books. I started reading about nature um, uh, because of Heidi and and Doris. Um, And this is about jellyfish. Um, I'm yeah, a third in. Julie Bearwell studied um, uh, uh, oceanic graphic science something. She got a PhD in, in that. I think, yeah, ocean science from the University of California. But then she moved to Austin and started writing textbooks. And after a couple of years, she got interested in jellyfish and she traveled all around the world interviewing people who either research jellyfish or uh, uh, who have some other connection with jellyfish. And it's absolutely fascinating. I mean, the only thing I knew about jellyfish is that they can sting you. I've been stung not that often, but one or, once or twice. Um, and that is basically it, and that they are translucent. 
amazing creatures. I can tell you, it's just, it's, yeah, mind boggling. I have to say, if you are not into scientific data details, she gives uh, data. I mean, not pages and pages, but there is scientific data about, uh, you know, uh, research results. Um, and it's mixed with memoir. We learn about her past, what she studied, but also about the travels um, where she, to, to interview all these different scientists and researchers. So it's not, I don't want to give the impression that the book is a, a, com a compilation of data, but there is some scientific data mentioned in the book. Uh, I find it fascinating, but if you are bored by that, it might be good to first download a sample and see whether you can yeah, you know, whether you are interested enough. But the jellyfish people, I can tell you, eh, mind-boggling, just mind-boggling. So I'm really enjoying this one. Um, and then there is one book that I will start, uh, a buddy read with Kim from Middle of the Book March, and we actually will start today on Sunday, and that's another science fiction um, crime mystery farthing by Joe Walton. And of course, I forgot when this book was published. Uh, but, but, but 2006. Now, Joe Walton, you're probably familiar, at least if you're reading uh, sci fi. She's a, a well known sci fi art. Uh, author. I really enjoyed her uh, Tessaly series, um, kind of philosophical sci-fi. I'm yeah, I'm I'm into that. Uh, but this one is more of an alternative history uh, science, uh, science <laughs> sci-fi. When uh, eight years after they overthrew Churchill and led Britain into a separate peace with Hitler, the upper crust families of the farthing set gather for a weekend retreat. Uh, but it all becomes nightmare when Sir, jo uh, Sir James is found murdered, a yellow star of David pinned to his chest. So it is um, alternative history um, set in the, the, the 20th century. It's, it sounded fascinating. And uh, I wanted to uh, pick up a book that would also qualify for um, much mystery madness or mystery. So this seems uh, the perfect pick. I hope we will both like it. Anyway, so these were my recent reads, um, books that I finished, that I started, and that I'm still reading. And thank you very much for watching. I hope you've enjoyed it. I'm all caught up with comments, so just hit me with your new comments. I will try to answer them as soon as possible. And I will see you all soon in the next one.